Hello friends. I will be discussing on chapter 4, unit 4, personality. Uh, now we would be studying the organization behavior at the individual level. So when we talk about at the individual level, we would be discussing about personality first, then perception, learning and motivation. Personality is a pattern body of habits, you know, and traits and attitudes and ideas about individual as these are organized externally into roles and statuses. It is derived from the Latin word persona, that means to speak through, which speaks through. And this Latin word is used to denote the mass and the actors who used to wear in an ancient Rome and Greece. An individual's personality is the combination of traits, patterns that influence their behavior, thought, motivation and emotions. So it drives individually to consistently think, feel, behave in specific ways. It is what, what makes an individual unique. So definition of personality, it is a pattern of relatively permanent traits, which we say and unique characteristics that give both consistency and individuality to a person's behavior. The sum total of ways in which individual reacts and interacts with others. Personality is a pattern of stable states and characteristics of persons that influence his or her behavior towards goal achievement. Before coming to the theories, I would like to brief about what personality is all about, more about. Personality represents those structural and dynamic properties of an individual or individuals as they reflect themselves in characteristics responses to situation. When we talk about characteristics of personality, we say it is something unique that is in an individual. Personality refers particularly to the persistent qualities of an individual. Personality represents a dynamic orientation of an organization to the environment. Personal social interactions greatly influences personality. And when we talk about um, when we talk about this personality, personality represents a unique organization of persistent, dynamic, and social predisposition. It is a consistent phenomena. It is a physiological and psychological phenomena. It impacts behaviors and others. It gives multiple expressions because personality is displayed in more than just behavior. It can be only seen in our thoughts, feelings, close relationships and other social interactions. Personality is a unique combination of patterns that influence a human's behavior, thought, motivation and emotion. So coming to the theories of personality, we would be starting with the Jungian framework. Carl Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who founded analytical psychology. Jung's work was influential in the fields of psychiatry, anthropology, archaeology, literature, philosophy and religious studies. Jung also worked as a research scientist at the famous Bergolozzi Hospital under Eugen Bluhrer. Carl Jung was initially influenced by Freud, but later he chose a different route. It led to the development of Myers-Briggs Types Indicator. We would be discussing about Myers-Briggs Type Personality Test, MBTI, which we say in the short form. Jung's personality theory was actually invented to demonstrate the complexity personality of human and its consequences. It was actually developed to label people based on their personality types. So, he, it's, it's not only about what and he has taken two elements, introversion and extroversion. When we talk about introversion, it refers to the personality theories of persons whose psyche energy only limits their own thoughts and feelings. But they think themselves about themselves. Introverts are considered as a shy person. They are always focused on... Uh, on their own thoughts and they do not want opinions from other persons in the world. They need to quiet, to concentrate, they are reflective, they are self-aware, they don't like to work in a group, they are more comfortable being alone, they prefer to write more than talk, they feel tired after being in a crowd. On the other hand, extroverts are a personality type of people 
extroverts are a personality type of people who would be you know uh, another type of people and it is the opposite of introversion and the psychic energy flows towards the outer world and the other people these types of persons are very sociable and very open minded extroverts are often described as the life of the party their outgoing vibrant nature draws a people to them and they have a hard time turning away the tension they thrive off the interaction they enjoy social settings they don't want to live alone for a long time they thrive around people they have friends they talk about problems and solutions they are outgoing optimistic they never afraid of risk and they are flexible coming to another personality for traits what is a personality trait when we talk about when we talk about personality trait what does that mean anybody when we talk about personality trait we says it is a trait is a characteristic that endures over time and across different situations so trait theories of personality focus on measuring and identifying describing individual differences in personality in terms of traits focus is on what is different and not what is the same it can be used to predict human behavior based on the traits now it is important to note that each of the primary traits represents a range between two extremes for example we had four scale for example extraversion represents a continuum between extreme extraversion an extreme introversion in the real world most people lie on between same in between while there is a significant body of literature supporting these primary personality traits researchers don't always agree on the exact labels of each dimensions the traits are described as below and when we talk about cattle's theory because cattle has announced for this five of the traits so openness extraversion agreeable and neurotism so when i talk about uh, openness openness refer to experience emphasizes imagination and insight the most of all the five personality traits people who are high in openness tend to have a broader range of interests they are curious about the world and other people and are eager to learn new things and enjoy new experiences people who are high in this personality trait tend to be more adventurous and creating creative second is consciousness when we talk about consciousness consciousness it is a trait that includes high level of thoughtfulness good impulse control goal oriented behaviors this organized and structured approach is often found within the people who work in science and they even high detail finance where detail orientation and organization are required as a skill set a highly conscious person will regularly plan ahead and analyze their own behavior to see how it affects others project management teams hr departments regularly have high conscious people working in their teams to help balance out the structural roles a good example of conscious person is would be someone who you know you is always planning ahead for the next time you meet and in the meantime regularly staying in contact and checking on your well being they like to organize around certain dates and events and focused on you when you meet third trait of cattle is extraversion extraversion as we discussed is a trait where many have will have come across in their own lives it is easily identifiable widely recognizable as someone who gets energized in the company of others this amongst other traits which include talkativeness assertiveness and high amounts of emotional expressiveness they have made extroverted people widely recognizable over many years of social interaction we have all of them one friend or family member who aren't exactly wallpapers in a social interaction 
then we had agreeable agreeableness is the personality trait which includes attributes such as trust altruism kindness affection and other pro social behaviors people who are high in agreeableness tends to be more cooperative while those low in the personality trait tend to be more competitive and sometimes even manipulative then we had neurotism neurotism is characterized by sadness the last trait moodness moodiness and emotional instability often mistaken for anti social behavior or worse or a great psychological issue neurotism is a physical and emotional response to stress we say it's related with the neuro perceived traits in someone's daily life individuals who exhibit high levels of neurotism will tend to experience mood swings anxiety hona irritability hona some individuals who experience sudden changes in their character from a day to day perspective could be highly neurotic respond to high stress levels in their work and personal lives anxiety which plays a very large part in the makeup of neurotism is about an individual's ability to cope with stress and perceived or actual risk people who suffer with neurotism will overthink a lot of situations and find difficulty in relaxing even in their own space of course so neurotism is one other home wherever you fall on the continuum for each of these primary traits five of these traits can be used to help identify wherever you are more or less likely to have more secondary personality traits these other traits are often split into two categories positive and negative traits also we can divide now next is mbti that is myers briggs type indicator myers briggs type indicator when we talk about this a personality trait that traps four characteristics and classify people into 1 to 16 personality types 1 to 16 like this reserved versus outgoing less intelligent versus more intelligent affected by feelings submissive versus no dominant serious versus happy go lucky expedient versus consciousness timid versus venturesome tough minded versus sensitive like this so we had 16 traits so it's basically four characteristics that classify people into 1 to 16 before that i would like to introduce about this indicator we say in short form mbti myers briggs type indicator both myers and briggs were fascinated by jung's theory of psychological types and recognized that the theory could have real world applications during world war 2 they began researching and developing an indicator that could be utilized to help understand individual differences by helping people understand themselves myers and briggs what they believe it that they could help people selecting their occupation that would be best suited with their personality types so based on the answers to the questions on the inventory people have identified the having 16 personality types 16 which i mentioned here the goal of mbti is to allow a respondent to further explore and understand their own personality including their likes dislikes strength weakness possible career preferences compatibility with other people no one personality type is best and better than another it isn't a tool designed to look for dysfunction or abnormality first is like extroversion versus introversion the extroversion versus introversion dichotomy was first explored by jung in his theory of personality types as a way to describe how people respond and interact with the world around them with these terms are familiar to most the people the way in which they are used in the mbti differs from somewhat with the popular usage so the if you see there is first one extroverted versus introverted similarly we had sensing versus intuition second one sensing versus intuition this scale involves looking at how people gather information from the world around them just like with the extroversion and introversion all people spend some time sensing and intuiting depending on the situation 
so according to the mbti people tend to be dominant in one area or the other third thinking versus feeling this skill focuses on how people make decisions based on the information that they gathered from sensing or intuition functions people will prefer thinking place a greater emphasis on facts on objective data so they tend to be very consistent and very logical and you know very impersonal while weighing a decision fourth one is judging versus perceiving the final skill involves how people tend to deal with the outside world those who can lean towards judging prefer structure and firm decisions people he who lean towards perceiving are more open flexible and adaptable these two tendencies interact with other skills remember all the people at least spend some time engaged in extroverted activities so each type is then listed by its four letter code four letter code as i told you it can be like in the form of if you see uh, we, i had put abbreviations in the bracket e or i s or n t or f p or j likewise so what he does is he had put a four letter code whosoever falls in four letter code would be given his personality type ISFP, INFJ, INFP, ISFJ, ISPJ, ISTP, INTJ, INTP. I will give an example of one, like ESTJ director. He would be of assertive and a rule-oriented personality. They would have high principles and a tendency to take charge. Similarly, ENFJ, ENFP, ENTP, ENTJ. this way he had developed 16 personality types taking this mbti indicator it provides an insight into what is probably why the instrument has become so popular next one is locus of control locus of control is the extent to which you feel you have control over the events that impact your life putting another way it is a belief about what whether the outcomes of the actions are contingent on what we do or on an events outside our personal control whether the events are our control or are out of control as explained by psychologist philip zimbardo in 1954 psychologist julian rotter suggested that our behavior was controlled by rewards and punishments and so he had given this the consequences of our actions helps determine our beliefs about the likely results of future behaviors locus of control is the extent to which again when you are dealing with the challenge in your life do you feel that you have control over the outcome or do you believe that you are at the mercy of outside forces your answer to this question lies in your locus of control we divide them into two internal and external locus of control internal locus of control are the persons who are more likely to take responsibility for their actions they tend to be less influenced by opinions of the other people they often do better at tasks when they are allowed to work at their own place they usually have a strong sense of self efficacy they tend to work hard to achieve things they want they feel confident they tend to be physically healthier they report being happier and more independent they often achieve greater success in the workplace whereas the external locus of control blame outside forces for their circumstances maine nahi kara uski wajah se aisa hua usne aisa kaha to hua aisa hona chahiye tha when they blame outside forces often credit luck or chance for any success don't believe that they can change their situation through their own effort frequently feel hopeless or powerless in the face of difficult situations they are more prone to experiences helplessness another personality type a and b so when we talk about personality type a and b first of all one should be having the concept of this type a and b personality type was coined by two american cardiologist mayer friedman and ray h rosenman in the year 
In their study, they discovered that the people with type A personality are likely to suffer coronary artery disease in their later life. Further, in 2012, the American Journal of Public Health published a paper by Mark Patrick Rue and others of the UK that the previous study was funded by tobacco companies and their personality types have nothing to do with their heart diseases. Based on personality, people can be bifurcated into two categories, type A and type B. Type A people are highly competitive, self-critical, they continually strive for goals without paying much attention to efforts and accomplishments. You can see in this slide, they are always walking and eating rapidly. They feel impatient with the rate at which most events take place. They strive to think or do or more things at once. They cannot cope up with leisure time. They are obsessed with numbers measuring their success in terms of how many or how much of everything they require. Type B never suffer with a sense of time urgency with its accompanying impatience. They feel they are usually more tolerant and relaxed and reflective than type A. They feel no need to display or discuss either their achievements or accomplishments. They play for fun and relaxation rather than to exhibit their superiority at any cost. They can relax without any guilt. So this is type A and B but what is basically when we talk about this type A and B, what is the basically um, key differences between type A and B? I would like to conclude type A personality is one which is stress prone in a hurry, impatient and fast in whatever they do. Type B personality is one which is less prone, stress prone, patient, relaxed, easy going and lacks time emergency. Type A individuals tend to be sensitive and proactive. On the other hand, type B individuals tend to be reflective and creative in nature. Type A individuals are impatient and type B are just the opposite of it. When it comes to temperament, you know type A personality is very short temper and type B is even temper. Type A individuals are highly competitive. In contrast, type B individuals focus more on enjoying the game rather than winning and losing. The person who possesses type A personality can do several things at a time. Unlike type B personality, individuals can do only one thing at a time. The stress level of type A individuals is typically higher than type B individuals together. So that's all. Thank you.